Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for another video. Today's video is all about Notre Dame in the 2021 draft, which will happen in eight hours from now. I'm filming this at around 11 a.m. on Thursday, April 29th, 2021. There are 12 or 13 guys that could legitimately end up on a team. I'd say probably nine or 10 that will end up being drafted. Going to go through all 13 of those guys. Um, talk about where I think they will be selected um, and just highlight their careers at Notre Dame a little bit. Um, it's a big, big day for them, and I'm excited to see where they end up. Uh, probably only one guy will be selected today. That's Jeremiah Wusu Kermar, and I'm going to start with him. The rest of the guys will most likely start later on. Um, as Jeremiah Wusu Kermar gets a handoff and scores a touchdown on the team he was formerly committed to, Virginia. Um, had to put in a little recruiting nugget there. He was committed to Virginia um, and later, and then decommitted and went to Notre Dame, which was very hard for him. But Jeremiah Wusu Karamora started um, the last couple of years, played some big time snaps. Excuse No, it was Tony Jones, excuse me. Um, I will say we are watching Liam Eikenberg's highlights. I thought I had on Jeremiah Wusu Karamora's because I was thinking of doing that, but I decided to put on Eikenberg. So I thought six. What You get what I'm saying. But Wusu Karamora. Big time, big time player. Um, is most likely going to be a top twenty-five pick. I haven't seen him further than twenty-five in any mock draft. Um, and wherever he goes, he's going to be a big time player and a big time threat. He's a modern linebacker. He's going to move. Um, he's going to move around their sets. What they're going to be able to do on offense, just with how versatile he is, he can stack the box, um, run up the gut. Lots of a few yards on a run for a running play, and then you can drop him back in coverage, and he can swat some passes. Um, he can even cover pretty well. That is something that I'm interested to see how he performs to the next level. He is a little smaller. I mean, he's not huge. I believe he's six one or six two, maybe six foot. Um, but yeah, with an NFL weight room and all the stuff they give you there, he should be able to bulk up to what he needs to be. And of course, Notre Dame does a great job with that, but the NFL is just different. We all know that. Uh, Liam Eichenberg, the man's highlights you're watching right now, number 74. He started since 2018. His first start was against Michigan. He's played a lot since then. Uh, I believe he has not set out one single game, even though he had a brutal injury to the eye. I believe he, he had a terrible bruise or something. I remember that game against Florida State. Absolute just obliterated eye. Um, I don't even know how you can see it was closed shut. But he's just so reliable. Um, he did not go to the Senior Bowl, which definitely hurt him. I talked about that in a, in a prior video. He did not go to that game for COVID reasons. Um, he thought thought he didn't want to get COVID, um, and he thought it would be a, a hot spot there to get COVID. He wanted to stay COVID clean, and, of course, he got COVID. That's why he did not have a pro day at Notre Dame. Notre Dame had two groups for pro day, and he was in that second group. That never happened along with it. Ade Ogundeji, Aaron Banks, a um, few others were supposed to be there as well. And then next guy on the list is Aaron Banks. In my opinion, one of the more underrated players in the whole draft. Played left guard for the Irish uh, right next to Liam Eikenberg. Love how he plays the game. Super physical, super dominant. If he's there in the fourth round, I don't know which team or why any team should pass up on him. I think he's a special, special talent. Um and you'll definitely be seeing him play on Sundays for a few years, hopefully more. Tommy Tremble is the fourth guy on this list. I think he'll probably be the third Irish player selected. He's right there on your screen, number 24. Tommy Tremble is a special blocker. Um, only scored, I believe, four touchdowns while he played at Notre Dame. Scored zero this past year, but he loves what he does. He's most definitely one of the best blocking tight ends in the history of college football, in my mind. Um and I hope, and I believe that will translate to the NFL. Sean Crawford um, played safety, played corner this year. Has been at Notre Dame for a long, long time. He could have came back, but no, he was done. Um, I'm not expecting him to be drafted. I do think he'll maybe get picked up by a team. We'll see him in, in the preseason. Um, great career there at Notre Dame. Got his Notre Dame degree. He's a great Notre Dame man. Uh, I'm not really expecting much, though, from him in the future. When it comes to football, Nick McLeod is another guy who I'm not expecting too much from. Uh, the 4-3-7 at his pro day at Notre Dame definitely helped his cause, but the former North Carolina State um, corner, I'm not seeing too much for him. I believe he will be picked in the sixth or seventh round, but 
I'm not expecting a big NFL career for him. Brock Wright, I think this is pretty much it for him. I would I wouldn't even be surprised if no team picks him up. I'm gonna be completely honest. He's more of an occasional move the sticks guy. Came in as high four star recruit out of Cypress, Texas, but not it didn't really work out for him at Notre Dame, but he got his degree. He was really close with Ian Buck. I, he, I think he had a great time at Notre Dame. He's gl- definitely glad he chose there. Um, he, he chose the Irish, but production-wise, didn't have a ton of production, even decreased a little bit from 2018. Um, a great career uh, for Mr. Wright. And then Robert Hainsey is a guy who I expect to be a day two or early day three pick, probably fourth, third or fourth round. Robert Hainsey um, – was the right tackle for the Irish this past year. Played a, played a few years alongside um, Patterson, Banks, and Eichenberg. And I love how he plays the game. He gets overlooked because of all the other big dogs, but I think he's going to be a, a solid – I don't know if he'd be a starter, but one of the best backup offensive linemen 100%. If he ends up on the right team and in the right system, we will see that. I could even see him starting. He's talented. Um, so that's my spiel on Robert Hainsey. Javon McKinley, love him. Didn't have a great year. Um, Didn't have a great few years until this year. This year, though, he really came up and came up when it mattered against Clemson on the November 7th game that we all know about and all will remember. Um, He came up with some huge third down catches. Um, I don't think he had a touchdown, but there he is catching a touchdown last year against Bowling Green. But I love Javon McKinley. The Louisiana kid made, made a name for himself this past year. Um, and I love how he plays the game. Big body. Um, I'm not going to compare him to Chase Claypool because I don't think he's Chase Claypool, but I could definitely see him being picked in the fourth, fifth, or sixth round and making a roster this year. Benny Skoronek, same thing, fourth, fifth, or sixth, maybe even seventh round pick. I do think he he gets at least a training camp and a preseason uh, offer, but I'm not expecting him to make a team. Started out at Northwestern, is from Indiana, uh, but transferred – was probably Notre Dame's second or third best wide receiver this past season. Um, great pickup in the transfer portal for Brian Kelly and company. Love Benny. I love his personality. I love how he plays the game, but I just don't think he's going to have much production in the NFL. Next guy um, is Adeok and Deji. The low three-star from Michigan turned out to be huge for Notre Dame this past season, one of their best players on defense. Um I definitely think he could actually be a big time player when it comes to the next level. If he's in the right system with a good defensive line coach and a good coordinator. I love how he plays the game. Super physical, super dominant. Um, six to himself is great personality too. I'm a big Ade fan and I hope he does some big things with whatever, t- with wh- whichever team takes them. The last two guys, Dalen Hayes and Ian Buck, probably the two leaders of both sides of the ball, Ian Buck on offense, Dalen Hayes on defense. I'll start with Dalen. Great career in Notre Dame was a five-star to California. Um, moved to Michigan, but he's committed to Notre Dame shortly after. It was a Michigan-Notre Dame battle, and Notre Dame pulled it out. I love Dalen Hayes. Uh, he represents everything Notre Dame is. Had a great last year. Some people expected better. I was fine with it. It got it got the job done. Um, you can't ask for much more from a dude who was injured all throughout high school pretty much and transferred a bunch. I mean, it was tough for him. I'm, I'm quite surprised I'm saying he was a five-star and I am surprised he was five-star but it is what it is um I'm not complaining that he was a five-star definitely helps Notre Dame's rankings um and recruiting wise but Dalen Hayes I love him I'm I'm a big big fan of his sure he didn't have the greatest career of all time was hurt his first couple years um I think the injuries will stick with him from high school and from college I do think he will battle a few more if he does make a team and sticks around it's just how it will go um, he has some banged up, some banged up legs, but I'm a huge Jalen fan, huge Jalen fan. And worst case scenario, I could definitely see him coming back and coaching or coming back and being involved in the school or something to that extent. And then last but not least, Ian Book. I'm expecting a fifth, sixth, or seventh round selection for Book. Um, 30, 30 and five record, moved the chains for Notre Dame. Uh, was thirty and three going into his last two games, so just incredible there. Um, you couldn't ask for much more. I love Ian Book. Some people are like, oh, we could have done better with someone else. No. Uh, Ian Book is forever going to be one of my favorite Notre Dame quarterbacks. He's probably my favorite right now. Maybe Deshaun Kaiser. I loved how he played the game. But Ian Book, true Notre Dame man, and I do think he'll be selected in the later part of the draft. Definitely a day three guy. 
Um, but if he were to end up being a fifth or sixth rounder, I'd be happy if I'm him. Um, hopefully he ends up on a team that he'll actually maybe get some reps, at least in the preseason. I expect him to, but maybe even the regular season. You never know. Maybe a team likes him enough to put him as their backup. Um, we'll see. Don't really have any teams in specific, but he did grow up a Niners fan. I do know that. But, yeah, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Kind of spur of the moment. I know I didn't do much research into this video at all. I was kind of just reminiscing on old thoughts I had on these 13 guys. Um, but, yeah, I'm super excited for tonight. I will have a video out tomorrow morning talking about things. That will have research and and whatnot for that will be a little bit more set in stone, a little bit more cared about. Um, I care about all the videos I make, but some more than others. This one was kind of just a random middle of the day thing. But, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace.